Happy Thursday. It is September 23rd, 2010. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And thank you for other affiliates picking up our show. Tonight we have an awesome uh, show in store for you with Tobias Lars. We are going to be talking about his spirit travel adventures and uh, why I think think well i highly recommend them for everyone why should we be doing this why is it so important to get back to nature and you know i'll just read a little quote from uh, tobias which you can see on his site spirit travel Dot com and that's with one T, spirittravel.com. When you reconnect to a free, not domesticated animal, when you connect with their spirit, they will help reawaken that part in yourself, your freedom, your energy, your spirit, your connection to all life, and at the same time, you will help that animal's collective spirit and support the larger ecosphere of our planet. I, uh, many of you know, I was able to go to the Wolf Adventure, and I'll be posting links to that and many other links in the text chat tonight if you would like to join us over at truthbrigade.com. Of course, there are many others to choose from. Oh, playing with elephants, uh, swimming with adults. Dolphins in Hawaii, wild horses, uh, Hopi land, ayahuasca, which is uh, coming up in October, so we'll, t- we'll talk about that as well, uh, Sedona retreats and manatees in Florida, but really, I can't think of any better way to connect with that spirit and remember our natural state. Of course, he is the author of Listening to the Sun and Awakening Souls, and uh, where he talks about... Out. I, I, now let's see, in the uh, second chapter, no one is listening to the sun, and I'd like to share a little bit of that with you. Um, the push-pull, steal-your-energy-from-you game. The idiotic experts are telling you that you need sunlight for vitamin D, but also that sunlight will cause cancer. This is the normal method of the controllers, the energy vampires on the planet, to instill fear and need in us and keep us swinging back and forth between the must-have-the-cure and the fear of death. The controllers of the earth sheeple will get you to fear all sorts of things and then they will sell you the cures for these made-up dangers. Take your money and energy and then think of new things for you to fear that they can manipulate you with and milk you further of your energy and money. Think how sad it is that we are now being mind-programmed to fear the sun. Yet we are so well-programmed that we swallow it unquestioningly when mouthed by the plastic robot reading the teleprompter on the evening news. It is that time, so we will talk about this when we return. Spirit Travel Adventures tonight with Tobias Lars on Truth Brigade Radio. All right, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight, Truth Brigade, on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. If you would like to join us for the text chat tonight, that's over at TruthBrigade.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight at 402-237-2525. That's 402-AFR-2525. Tobias Lars is our special guest tonight. He is a personal awakening coach and soul counselor, also the author of Listening to the Sun, which is my one of my favorite books, and uh, the creator of Course of Awakening, Dot com and Spirit Travel Adventures, which we are here to talk about tonight. Tobias, how the heck are you doing? Hi, Christy. <clears throat> Good to hear your voice again. Oh, and, oh, um... oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! Exactly. Yeah! Wow! Well, we just, you know, many people here know I was able to attend uh, your wolf adventure, and I don't even know what to say other than, ow, ow, ow! (laughs) It was 
so beautiful, so magical, and I just thought it was so important. I mean, we've had you on the show for over a year, and, you know, we mention it, but we kind of skim over it. We've never really talked in depth about these adventures, how they came to be, and why they are so important for everyone. Mm. So that how, that howling is when, when Fleury nipped you on the leg or what? That was so cute. Oh, God. You know, somebody came to see me last night, and, you know, know, all those wolves, they all look the same and stuff. But um, (laughs) it was either (laughs) Selena or Cheyenne or Dakota, because they have that darker um, skin. But I kind of did a double take, like, really? So I didn't spend enough time. You know, I I think it's Cheyenne, but, um, Mm -hmm. yeah... It it came, to vi- came, to, came to visit you? To in my waking state. Really? I, uh-huh. <laughs> in the woods or just etherically? The, You're going to get sitting. locked up if you start talking like this now. I know, sitting right here. It was a perfect vision, plain as day, just as I'm looking at the computer screen in front of me. Wow, that's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, we and we talked about that on, on one of the days on how... Each of them have their own frequency. We call it personality, you know. But it's like everything on the earth has its own medicine, is what the native peoples would call it. Medicine is a frequency. It's a vibration. Every, you know, a black walnut tree has a certain type of frequency of food and and, and taste and all the plants and every animal, but unique individuals. When we were noticing that Dakota and Selena and Savannah and Fleury and Frost and all of them, they all have their own personality, and that means they have it their own frequency, and it's all part of the big orchestration of the divine player, who's God, and we're all meant to have unique frequencies and to appreciate those. And they really are medicine. You know, at a certain point, God and Spirit knows that just like um, where you are, and Leighton, I think, talked about this a little bit, geographic place where we are has its own frequency. Everything is made of atoms, plants, the plants, the rocks, the minerals, the water, the animals, and so it has its own tone. I was just listening to someone I like as an Indian teacher today, and he talked about one of his awakening experience was sitting at the foot of the Himalayas, which are the you know the, the most incredible mountains on the world, size-wise, and just uh, the cleanliness, in a sense, of the air and the snow. And he said everything turned into sound. Everything turned into sound. He heard his own voice singing like an orchestra, even though his mouth was shut, and all of the atoms have this tone and sound. So anyway, I think we tapped into that a little bit when we did our course of awakening uh, at the, the adventure, and we could feel Dakota sitting there in front of us, and so you must have had another visitation. That's really cool. Mm. Yeah, it was really cool. You're right. I shouldn't tell anyone about that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's just... Words cannot describe what an amazing experience that was. I mean... You know, it's one thing to, like, look at pictures of wolves or watch Dancing with Wolves or, you know, other movies and such. And, I mean, I guess if you're a pet owner or whatever, you love animals, and you kind of instinctively know. But until you're in there with them, rolling around, getting kissed and licked and... (laughs) and, uh, Oh, go ahead. Getting your hair pulled. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I, how did they know I love that? No. <laughs> Oops, that's another thing I should say on the air. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know what? I'm speaking of that, how did they know, um, reminds me of when we went to see Dakota. 
And, of course, um, for those of you who don't know, wolves don't really speak English, um, but <laughs> they have the most amazing intuition and powerful spirit. Um, Bart, uh, the guy who jo joined us from Holland and myself, we're thinking, yeah, I really want a, a wolf to hug me and kiss me and play with me and jump on me. We, you know, we didn't even really necessarily say it out loud. And, you know, and then, of course, there was Joy, who loved the wolves but she just you know they're kind of big they're huge and she was just thinking oh I hope he doesn't jump on me and they yeah. knew they knew what to do they knew who to jump on and not who to not to jump on and how amazing is that very respectful yeah they feel it you know and they'll they'll play at the level we're ready to play which is Beautiful. They're, they're operating on in frequency, on intuition, on, on feeling our energies. And we do that with each other as well as humans. You know, so part of these adventures with the wolves, the manatees, the dolphins, the horses, and hopefully some elephants here this next year, um, is about relearning as humans that we can just operate that way too. And the animals will help you realize, see with real eyes again, that, oh, yeah, I know how to do this because I'm a human being. I have all the frequencies that have existed on Earth. You know, there's been a billion years of ev evolution here and creative intervention, you know, divine intervention. Why is it always that we have to have either or? Either God made all of it or it was all evolution. No, that's not true. When I was 19 and a, a sophomore in, in college, I, I, I knew instantly. Catastrophic evolution. I became a biologist for a while. Um, of course there's not points, these points that don't make sense in the history of Earth, where there was a much too fast, a leap, for instance, between things in, living in the water to being able to walk on land. We've all heard the talk of the missing link. Well, there's a whole bunch of missing links on the evolutionary scale. So it's never either or. It's always both and more. It's never either or. It's always both and more. Yes, evolution is true. All you got to do is look in a petri dish and watch fruit flies over a few hours evolve. Of course, they change. You can't deny it. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't the divine intervention or what we would call our souls or higher intelligence or God, whatever you want to call it. Of course, it stepped in and did all kinds of stuff. It said, okay, that's enough of dinosaurs. We need to stop that for a while now. We're going to do mammals. That happened way, way too quick. Statistical mathematics cannot account for those leaps of evolution. And any evolutionist, biologist worth their salt admits that today, and they try to come up with theories, things called like catastrophic evolution. Hmm. Basically, we, we have no clue how that happened. It must have been a meteor or something big happened, and we, we don't know. We don't want to think about it because it doesn't fit our theory. So... Uh, we, as humans, then, have access to all this past billion years on the planet. Your cells, the very oxygen and carbon that you're, and nitrogen that we're breathing right now, everybody listening, the very nitrogen and carbon and oxygen that we're breathing, the dinosaur breath, every atom gets recycled. Talk about a recycling program, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the atoms don't get destroyed. They might break, break into something else. When you burn wood, that carbon becomes carbon dioxide and oxygen, I think. Some chemicals <laughs> correct, correct me otherwise. So we're recycling all these atoms. They're in your body right now. Every seven years, our bodies are completely recycled. You know that there's not one single atom in your body right now that was there seven years ago. Yeah. That's true. We rebuild ourselves every seven years. Well, if we're doing that, what if we could go, hey, I'd like to remain young. Mm -hmm. It is possible. Just because we have a giant morphic field collective programming that we must age and die in a certain way doesn't mean it was always that way on Earth. You know, in Atlantis or Hyperborea, Hyperborea or whatever you want to call it, Beings lived to 50, 100,000 years old. Or there was no time. And once you reach, quote, enlightenment or awake states again, Jesus right now is existing in a timeless place. That's why when he appears to people, he looks like a young man. He doesn't look like an old man, Jesus. He doesn't walk around with a cane. 
Because when we live in the eternal now, thank you, Eckhart Tolle, <laughs> when we start living in the eternal now, the eternal now is all that is, you start not aging. This is going to become more and more fact. I predict right now, we're going to start seeing 60, 70, 80, 90 year old people that looked young, that looked like they're 40 or 45 or 50, which is young to all of you guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. 